Good afternoon. My name is Tyler Sams. I welcome you to this Bible study of the Judson Road Church of Christ as we look at the gospel according to Mark. We have been studying this in our Sunday morning Bible class. And so we're going to pick up right where we left off in Mark chapter 7. So if you've got your New Testaments with you, be opening up to Mark chapter 7, and that's where we'll get started today in this study. Uh, we covered the first half of Mark chapter 7 already. As you look here, at the beginning of the chapter, Jesus is being questioned by the Pharisees because of the behavior of his disciples. And the Pharisees pose this complaint to Jesus that his disciples were not walking according to the tradition of the elders because they were eating their bread with unwashed hands. And it's, it's good to note here in, in verse 5, and in fact going back to verses 3 and 4 as well, that this question was not a matter of the law of Moses, but rather a, a question of their, their own traditions. So the, th there's not an issue here of Jesus' disciples violating the law of Moses, but rather violating some of these traditions that the Pharisees and others had come up with. As Jesus responds uh, to their question, Jesus noted the hypocrisy of the Pharisees, uh, how they allowed people to ignore uh, God's commands, for example, to take care of one's parents. He noted that their religion was very outward. It was very superficial. It didn't really penetrate to the heart. Listen to what Jesus said in verse 6. This people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. And in vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the precepts of man. Going on into verse 14, Jesus would talk about what truly defiles a man. It was not eating with unwashed hands, but what truly defiled a man was sin. Sin is what would defile a man. It wasn't something outward that would defile him, but rather something that was inward. Because from the heart, Jesus said, in verse 21, proceed the evil thoughts and fornications, thefts, murders, adulteries, deeds of coveting and wickedness, as well as deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, and foolishness. All these things proceed from within, and these defile a man. And then Jesus would conclude, responding to their question, by noting the need to keep the commandments of God. Chapter 7 and verse 8, neglecting the commandment of God you hold to the tradition of man. And again in verse 13, thus invalidating the word of God by your tradition, which you have handed down, and you do many such things like this. Uh, we live in a world today that, that seems to uh, almost despise the commands of God. But the reality is, if we're going to be servants of God, we must keep his commandments. And so as we look at that in the context of Mark chapter 7, it's not about washing hands, but it is about taking care of one's parents. And then as Jesus noted that sin begins in the heart, I think that explains a lot that we read about elsewhere in the Bible uh, concerning the need for us to guard our hearts. Keep the heart with all diligence, for out of it flow the issues of life. Passages like that that we read in the Old Testament. And so when we find ourselves in sin, when we find ourselves struggling with sin, while it is good to deal with the outer effects of sin and while we're, we might be dealing with the fallout from one sin or another, the most important thing to do when we're trying to fix a sin problem is fixing my heart because until I fix my heart, I don't have everything else set in order. Now, let's get over to verse 24 and let's get into some new material here as we wrap up Mark chapter 7. Mark chapter 7 and verse 24. Mark records this, And from there he arose and went away to the region of Tyre. And when he had entered a house, he wanted no one to know of it, yet he could not escape notice. But after hearing of him, a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately came and fell at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile of the Syrophoenician race. And she kept asking him to cast the demon out of her daughter. And he was saying to her, Let the children be satisfied first, for it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. But she answered and said to him, Yes, Lord, but even the dogs under the table feed on the children's crumbs. And he said to her, Because of this answer, go your way. The demon has gone out of your daughter. And going back to her home, she found the child lying on the bed, the demon having departed. 
And so Jesus and his disciples have retreated to a house here in the area of Tyre. Perhaps this is to rest. Uh, Jesus had mentioned this to his disciples earlier in Mark's gospel account, and they haven't had much time to do it up till now. Maybe that's why they're retreating to this house and hoping that no one is going to recognize them. But as commonly happens, people recognize Jesus. He's beginning to build a reputation. <coughs> Pardon me. And so this woman appears who is loudly imploring for Jesus to help her daughter. Right? Chapter 7 and verse 25, her daughter had an unclean spirit, and immediately she comes and falls at the feet of Jesus. Matthew records this story, and he gives some alternate details. In Matthew chapter 15, beginning over here in verse 21, Jesus went away from there and withdrew into the district of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman came out from that region and began crying out, saying, and this is something Matthew records that Mark does not, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is cruelly demon-possessed. But he did not answer her a word, and his disciples came to him and kept saying to him, Send her away, for she is shouting at us. But he answered and said, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and began to bow down before him, saying, Lord, help me. And then he's going to say the same thing that he did in Mark. It is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. But she said, Yes, Lord, but even the dogs feed on the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said to her, O woman, your faith is great. Be it done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed at once. It's interesting that this woman is a Gentile, and yet here she is expressing great confidence in Jesus, going even so far as to identify him as Lord and Son of David. Matthew will record that for us instead of Mark. Mark, of course, not writing to a primarily Jewish audience. Matthew was. And so the fact that this Gentile woman would identify Jesus as the Son of David was indeed significant. She is expressing a great confidence in Jesus, perhaps even as the promised Messiah of the Old Testament. Jesus is going to, to state, and perhaps challenge this woman, that he was sent only to the Jews, but yet we see the woman continuing to reach out to him. I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, Jesus says in Matthew fifteen twenty four, But she came and began to bow down before him, saying, Lord, help me. She is crying out for his help over and over and over again. And so in Mark chapter 7, when Jesus makes this comment about children and crumbs and dogs, while it might read awkwardly in our English, Jesus is not insulting this woman. He's, he's not using the, the term in the Greek language that was normally referencing uh, kind of the stray dogs, the street dogs, something like this. He, he's using a phrase uh, referring to a household dog, like we might have a dog that wanders into the kitchen and sits under the table and, and waits for somebody to drop something. Jesus is not insulting the woman here, but he's provoking a deeper conversation. And it's, it's, it's an image that she picks up on. But to our point, being sent to the Jews did not preclude Jesus from helping anyone. And so in chapter 7 and verse 27, Let the children be satisfied first, for it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. But she answered, Yes, Lord, but even the dogs under the table feed on the children's crumbs. And he said to her, Because of this answer, go your way. The demon has gone out of your daughter. Jesus was going to help anyone who needed him, whether it was a Jew, whether it was a Gentile. Uh, that was a lesson several people needed to learn. Perhaps there were some slow hearts among his disciples that Jesus is having to reason with here in Mark chapter 7. But whatever the case, Jesus heals this woman's daughter and he heals her from a distance. You notice that the woman doesn't invite Jesus to her house, doesn't demand that Jesus would come into her home. She seems to recognize Jesus would be able to do what needed to be done even from a distance. What great faith this woman had. Come over to verse 31 and we get this last section in Mark chapter 7, Jesus leaves the region of Tyre and came through Sidon to the Sea of Galilee within the region of Decapolis. And they brought to him one who was deaf and spoke with great difficulty, and they entreated Jesus to lay his hand upon him. And he took him aside from the multitude by himself and put his fingers into his ears, and after spitting, he touched his tongue. And looking up to heaven with a deep sigh, he said to him, Ephatha, that is, be opened. 
and his ears were opened, and the impediment of his tongue was removed, and he began to speak plainly. And he gave them orders not to tell anyone, but the more he ordered them, the more widely they continued to proclaim it. And they were utterly astonished, saying, He has done all things well. He makes even the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak. So here we are back in the region of the Sea of Galilee. And Jesus is once again confronted by somebody who needs help. This time it's a deaf man who has a speech impediment. And again, we see Mark emphasizing to us the need to have positive people in our lives, the need to have helpful people in our lives, the blessing that comes about by having good friends. These people bring to Jesus their friend, a man who was deaf and who spoke with great difficulty. And what does Jesus do? Well, Jesus does just exactly what was referenced in the Old Testament. Go read Isaiah 35, 5, and 6 sometime. The very things that Jesus is doing are the very things that were prophesied for the Messianic age. It seems as though Jesus is setting himself apart, not simply as a prophet, but as a prophet of distinction. He's different than Moses. He's different than Joshua. He's different than all of these prophets before. He is someone of great significance. And indeed, verse 37, they would recognize that. He has done all things well. He makes even the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak. This is going to echo uh, very similarly what we see over in the book of John. In John uh, chapter 9, when the man born blind is healed. And the people marvel at what Jesus had done there. And they're shocked that, that he would do this, that he would heal this man and do something that had never been seen before. In John chapter 9 and verse 17, they said to the blind man, these were the Pharisees, what do you say about him since he opened your eyes? And the blind man said, he is a prophet. The Jews therefore did not believe it of him that he had been blind and that he had received sight until they called the parents of the very one who had received his sight. And they questioned him, saying, Is this your son, whom you say was born blind? Then how does he now see? His parents answered then and said, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind, but how he now sees we do not know, or who opened his eyes we do not know. Ask him, because he is of age. Well, eventually they get around to asking him. And we come over to verse 30. And the man answered and said to them, Well, here is an amazing thing, that you do not know where he is from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not hear sinners, but if anyone is God-fearing and does his will, he hears them. Since the beginning of time, it has never been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God... He could do nothing. People are beginning to see who Jesus is, how significant Jesus is. And his fame and reputation is only going to grow as we move throughout the rest of the book of Mark. Thanks for joining me today in this study. I look forward to being back with you on Sunday for another study in Mark's Gospel account. Until then, have a good day.